All right, I'm here kind of to go over a different type of discussion video, um, something I've seen a lot, and it's not exactly new, I would say, I suppose. I mean, this has been going around forever if you watch old, you know, old uh, game hunting videos going back as far as, you know, 10 years ago or so, you'd probably see the same sentiment, but... Answering the question here about resellers, what do we think about resellers? What do I think about resellers? Um, and it's interesting, I guess, to say the least. Um, so I will say that I do resell, um, and that is not my full-time job, <laughs> not even close, but it's something I do. Um, you know, I go out to garage sales, I go out to flea markets. If I find a good deal, you know, I'll pick it up, resell it. You know, that's fine. I, if I buy a lot of stuff, I keep the stuff I want. I resell it. That money goes back into buying games and whatever else. So I do resell and I do want to make that clear. But as far as reselling goes, I genuinely don't have a problem with it. And I think there's a lot of overblown thoughts about reselling. And I understand they can be frustrating. And I, there are some aspects of reselling that I think are a bit ridiculous. But the general reseller, someone who is out there buying stuff, you know, they get a good deal They at a pawn shop. They figure, oh, you know, this will fund my collection. This will, you know, and if you do it for a living too, I have no problem with that either. Um, what I think is interesting lately I've seen, and I don't want to call any YouTubers out. Um, and some of the YouTubers who do this, I, I actually like a lot. I watch their videos, whatever. But I always find it really frustrating when there are YouTubers who will go into a game store and they'll find a game that's like mildly underpriced and be like, oh yeah, this is 20 bucks, but I can sell it for $26 on Amazon. And I'm, I, and I think like, okay. Um, and I think doing that is both, I don't know, a waste of time, but it's also kind of unleading, uh, misleading, I should say. Uh, it's, it's kind of misleading because when a, I, I think it's important, and a lot of audience members of YouTube channels don't realize this, when a YouTuber goes to a game store and is making these videos, and if they have a challenge or they have something fun they're doing with it, um, that $6 fine is just a way for them, uh, you know, to add to their quote-unquote bank or add to their budget, and it is for people to have something to watch in the video, to make the video interesting. Odds are they're not going to make that $6. Maybe they will, um, but you got to think of tax. I know some of these guys have tax-free stuff, whatever, um, resell stuff. I only think that works with new stuff, so I don't know. But, you know, after tax, that $20 up to 26 becomes maybe 22 up to 26 you know? And it's like, okay, there's $4 there, and then if there's a return, they are not making the money off of that. They are making money off of the YouTube ad revenue and the sponsors and everything. And that's fine. I think making your money off of YouTube, making your money off of sponsors is great. But I do think that it is a little bit concerning when we're watching people go out there and think, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be able to make my living doing Amazon reselling and eBay reselling. And it's like, yeah, you can, you can do that. I mean, you put the work in, I think that's great. And you're able to do that. But I don't think it's the best way of advising people to go in for such tiny, tiny budgets or t such tiny margins on their stuff. And I think that's kind of where it gets to me the most with that kind of thing. And I also find it really strange. Once again, maybe someone advises this and I'd love to hear in the comments below, but I find it very strange when something will be like, oh yeah, so this is $70, but I can get 82 on Amazon. Like that margin is really bad. Once again, considering tax, but that margin's not great. Um, so that's just something a little bit that I wanted to kind of discuss with that. I, I think it's important to know when you're watching a reselling YouTube video, uh, obviously they're making money off the reselling and that's perfectly great, but their main concern is making an entertaining video. And you got to remember that if not always take the advice, there's always great things to be on the lookout for, for sure. And I, that's, I like watching those channels a lot to learn those things and everything, but I find not only misleading a little bit, but I also just think it's kind of an, like, I don't know, you're really going to make like that $5. It's great. You're helping out the game store here and everything, usually locally owned game stores. But like, I don't know, someone else could have got that deal. It's like not really underpriced. You know, if I went into a game store and I saw 
they they uh, priced you know a forty dollar game at ten dollars, and I'll be like, yeah, okay, that's a good margin, and I'll, I'll grab that for the flip. But I don't know, <laughs> the small margins is kind of weird. But I you know I don't want to call anyone out with that because there are channels who do that, and I enjoy. I just find it a little strange, and just want to give you guys something to think about too with that. Um, but with reselling, I don't feel like enough people really think about reselling as you know myself and other people who go out to garage sales, you know, do that work out there. <clears throat> it is not, you know, I'm not in the coal mine. No one's <laughs> resellers are not working in the coal mine or anything. You know, it's an easy job. <clears throat> it's an easy way to make some extra money. It's an easy job, but it's time consuming and it takes work. And you got to think of it too, is I've, you know, brought probably hundreds, if not over a thousand games out of people's closets and their attics, stuff that maybe got would, would have gotten thrown away or stuff that would have, you know, just sat forever and never been used again. And it can be enjoyed by me in my collection. It can be enjoyed by the people who I sell to. When I trade stuff off to game stores, it helps them out, you know, gives them inventory. Uh, you know, people can enjoy it there. So that's something to think about too, is it's bringing a lot of games out and, <clears throat> I'm not going to say it's a huge, significant uh, increase, but I would be willing to bet that there is a good amount of, you know, tied to, I guess, the reselling community, a good amount of extra games brought out of people, you know, tens of thousands probably of games brought out of people's garages, brought out of people's attics that then lowered the price because there's just more on there. You know, when I you go out and let's say Super Mario Brothers 3, maybe that game goes from being like a 15 to $20 game to a 30 to $30 game because there were, you know, a couple tens of thousands less copies found because there's no one out there looking for it. It's an interesting to think, thing to think about there. I'm not going to pretend like we're some kind of saviors of the, the retro gaming community. Nothing like that. Um, I'm just going to go out and say that, you know, something to think about there. It's not hard work. It's not, you know, it's nothing crazy. Um, and it's just something to think about, uh, with that, how many more copies of, of games out there have been put out there. Um, but it's also, you got to think too, do we really want these games getting into the hands of like Goodwill who just is awful and horrible? Do we really want them getting into the hands of, <clears throat> you know, uh, GameStop, now that they're taking retro games again, you know, some of these better games, things like that, you know, GameStop threw away a bunch of games, they threw away cases, you know, do we really, maybe they've thrown away boxes, do we really want them to get to there? So I think that's all good and fine. One of my biggest problems with resellers is the good old fashioned, you know, flea market reseller. Um, and they, for a while, flea market resellers felt like they were kind of a dying breed, but they've come back quite a bit this year. And I think something interesting to think about with that is just, I don't know, I don't really get it. Like, flea market resellers who just overprice their stuff, like, there is a flea market reseller I see out, like, every week, and their prices are, like, eBay price, but then add, like, 3 to $5. And I'm almost wondering, like, are they taking in shipping? Like, oh, you don't have to pay for shipping. You're going to be, you can just grab this out here. Um, and you got to think with a lot of those sellers, you know, flea market sellers, flea markets are cheap way to sell. Um, flea markets usually what I think like maybe $20 to put out a table for the day. If that, you know, some places less, maybe some places, some days, maybe more. Um, there's no overhead. You're just putting your time into it and you got your stuff out there. You're getting cash payments. You're not dealing with PayPal taking a cut. You're not dealing with card payments, taking a cut. You're not paying shipping. You're not paying eBay fees. I really feel like that is where the reseller outrage should go towards more. Um, and I'm not saying they have to put their stuff like half price or anything, but I, I feel like if anything, those are the guys who we should be like, Hey, wait a second. <laughs> What's up with this? What's going on here? Uh, why is this stuff so pricey for whatever reason? You know, um, that's what I find more concerning. That's what I find more irritating. It's like, well, you know, I just don't understand why uh, this stuff is so much more expensive. But, you know, as far as reselling goes with buying private deals, buying private collections, I think that's awesome. I, I feel like that's really a win-win with a lot of people. You know, someone, if, you know, someone wants to sell off their entire collection but doesn't want to put in the work, they can still get, you know, a nice cash, cash uh, deal with someone for their games. And then that person can put in the work that they want to do. They do it full time or they do it. They're willing to put in the effort. 
and they can make their money too. I really feel like that's a win-win type situation. I don't get why people get so mad at reselling there. Um, and I, I get, I get that resellers can be annoying. I have come across some of the most insufferable people I've ever met have been resellers that I met out at the flea market or at garage sales, whatever. So I can get that. But you know, when someone you can tell means well, just doing their thing, maybe making a living off of it, maybe just funding their hobby with it. There's really nothing to be that mad at about. I, I just don't, I don't really quite get the outrage there. And I, I understand, but I think um, the idea that, you know, reselling is overall bad is a little bit annoying. And I get the idea too, that reselling is driving up game prices. I, I, I see that about half. I, I see that argument about half, but I also feel like the one thing that's demand is demand driving up game prices. You know, resellers, I can get a copy of, I don't know. Let's, let's pick a random game. I can get a copy of super Mario 64, maybe 25 to $30 game right now. I could put that game up for $60 on eBay. It's not going to sell, you know, the cart, it's going to sit there. It's not going to sell. No one's going to pay that much for it. You know, any, every reseller could technically do that. It's not going to sell. No one's going to pay that. And as soon as someone decides, Hey, I'll just put this up for 30 again, that's going to be the one that sells. Um, so it's demand is what's driving stuff. And you can see prices rise and fall based completely on demand and nothing more. Think about when they announced Shenmue three, and Shenmue like skyrocketed in price. Then they announced the Shenmue one and two HD, and then it comes right back down. Um, demand is everything, and I, I see you know as we get more remakes of classic games, we get more ways to access them on like Nintendo Switch Online or on the PlayStation catalog on Xbox. Um, you just naturally see game prices fall. Like keep an eye on the Super or the, the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. GameCube price, when that remake comes out, I'm willing to bet that that remake is going to drop that game's price below the $100 range. Will it still be somewhat valuable game? Sure. It's not going to drop down to $15 that I paid for it in 2011 when I wanted to play the game for the first time, but it's going to be considerably cheaper, I, I'm willing to guess. And you can call me on that if this is, ends up being a bad take or outdated. Um, and I, I really do believe that demand drives it up more than anything else. So I don't want this to seem more of uh, just a reseller protection video. I really don't have any skin in the game. Yeah, I sell stuff on eBay. I, I, I don't care. I, I don't base my personality on it. But I think it's interesting to think about it, too, just from the stance that, um, you know, in a way it can be useful, in a way it can be helpful, and in a way that, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine. I don't really get the the whole ordeal unless they're a genuinely bad reseller genuinely bad person the idea of reselling isn't necessarily destroying everything um so maybe we can stop with the melodrama on that i don't know either way i'd like to hear what you think in the comments let's keep it civil but i'd like to hear your thoughts anything that you think that i might have gotten off base with anything that you think that maybe i missed discussing uh i want to hear your thoughts about it um, so leave them in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter over at Object Gaming. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching.